Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. So I hope you all have enjoyed this book. It's it's deep. But there's a lot of information there. It's a lot of good information. And sometimes we just need to unpack it to, to kind of just to get a sense of what it means. So I, I've been spending a few weeks on it just to come up with this talk. And um, it, it's just a beautiful segment that we're going to be talking about today. So in our, our, I'm going to be talking about chapters 6, 7, and 8, the, um, the purification and it's just a wonderful, wonderful talk about uh, wonderful chapters on just confession, confession of, of our sins, and it's so important. And this morning, the first purification is to be made for sin, which means whereby to make it the sacrament of penance. Francis de Sales advises us to seek out the best confessor within our reach. <clears throat> there were a lot of different areas around here, a lot of different parishes, a lot of different confessors. So we need to look for a person that's going to work best for us. He tells us to make use of one of the many little books that are written in order to help the examination of conscience. There's a lot of books out there, but there's also apps on our phone. If we want to use that phone or something other than social media, or NFL, or whatever, the sports that you're following. Um, we can really dig down into these sins and these different, this different issues that we, we're having in our lives. It tells us to read books carefully. We need to examine it point by point. We need to examine our lives point by point. Where we have sinned from the first use of reason to our present time. So Francis is talking about a general confession. He's talking about really looking back at our whole life and looking back at what we need to change and how we've, how we've failed. And he's, looking us to, he's asking us to look at just the, the overall conscious of our lives. I love the statement that he makes. If you mistrust your memory, write down the results of your examination. And I see that often now. I was at <clears throat> 4 o'clock Mass last week, and I saw this line going to Father Mo, quite a long line, so it's wonderful. Um, and I saw all these children, and they had notes. And that's one thing that I never really thought of when I was growing up is to write this stuff down. And I think that's where the app helps, helps too, because it, it kind of, it, once you do the app, it really leaves you with a list. And it, I don't know about you, but... I forget everything. So by the time I get going, I focus on like one or two, then I get done. I'm like, oh man, I forgot that. That's something really that might have really connected in with what I was needing to talk about today. So <clears throat> I suggest that we write it down like he says. Through confession, God safely brings us back to a loving union with him. And God offers confession as a gift to us. It's a gift. It, it, it's just such a wonderful time to be, to look at everything that we do and know that God has great mercy and great love for us, and he wants to give us this gift. So we know that confession or the sacrament of reconciliation is one of those seven sacraments. 
Sacraments are effective signs that are established by Christ and continue in the church. They are signs that communicate the sanctifying grace that they signify. And that's right from the catechism. Francis suggests a general confession of your whole life and it's strongly recommended but not absolutely necessary. I think that's kind of cool that we should do it, but yeah, you don't have to, but I strongly suggest it. <clears throat> the sacrament of reconciliation is meant to be a significant encounter with God's mercy. At particular moments in our faith journey, preparing a general, general confession gives us a good opportunity to prayerfully reflect on the whole life history and on what, how, the faithful, how faithful God has been to us, even when we are not so faithful to him. Going over our whole lives, or even just a large portion of it, together with the Lord, is meant to bring us into a new appreciation on our need for God, and the abundance of his mercy, the depth of his, the depths of his care and love for us. When we take, a patiently take time to review all the sins of our past life in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit will often enlighten us regarding not only the individual failings, but regarding patterns of sin and underlying attitudes that makes us vulnerable to temptation. These insights can serve us as a valuable guide as we search for a path towards spiritual growth. Ordinary confessions, Francis tells us, are sometimes made with little preparation or contrition. People go into confession with the intentions of returning to sin, he tells us. The general confession has great value. It summons us to know ourselves. It assumes whole sorrow. It makes us the marvel at the mercy of God. It brings peace to our hearts and calms our minds. It can excite us to make good resolutions. It can provide our spiritual director or confessor with the opportunity to advise us. And it helps us to reveal ourselves with our with, with our conscience. It's very important to find that good confessor. I remember growing up, my family, my parents would take us all to confession for our Easter and Christmas obligations. But my parents would go to a different parish. They didn't want to go to their own priest. And unfortunately, that's a habit that really kind of I, I grew up with. And it almost made me think, this is what I should do. So I learned to, to go to confessors that didn't know my voice. Back then, I was behind, we were all behind the screen back then. There was no face-to-face. -face. So today, this is something that's still very difficult for me, something that I still struggle with is, is confession, to sit and talk to a priest that I, I know. And I know a lot of priests. Um, to tell my faults, my sins, and what is bothering me is often very difficult to be open up myself and to be humble. And that's what it's all about, is being humble before God, to sit there and say, these are my sins, Lord. And we shouldn't be afraid of it, but, I mean, sometimes that's one of the reasons people stay away from it. If we can find someone that knows us to assist us in this important, important battle that we're struggling with, it could truly help us in our struggles and our journey. That is why we should be in the habit of going to the same confessor, not to bounce around. Find someone that can truly help us. And based on the gravity, we know that there are two kinds of sins, mortal and venial. Mortal sin is that total severing of a life of grace. And this necessitates the new initiative of God's mercy and conversion of our heart that is normally accomplished in the sacrament of reconciliation. A general confession forces us to a clearer knowledge and enkindles a wholesome shame for our past life 
and rouses gratitude for God's mercy. It rouses gratitude for God's mercy. We should always be thankful for this great gift that he gives us. So the chapter 7, the second purification. For some, there is a reluctance to give up this affection for sin. Affection for sin means that one resolves never to sin again, but still desires the fatal delights of the sin. Affection for sin causes spiritual weariness, which is, increases the danger of falling again. We may give up sins, but the root of sins we don't give up. We keep looking back and revisiting the sin because we are attached to them. Francis de Sales speaks of these attachments through analogies in the book. Although Israel physically left Egypt, they still spoke about things of Egypt. Lot's wife looked back. She was reluctant to leave. Giving up revenge, yet we keep speaking of the quarrel like Israel and Egypt. When we look back and we don't look forward, we're not always moving away from the sin that we, we've committed or we want to give up. Attachments can be dangerous. They risk falling. We, we risk falling back. They weaken the spirit of doing good easily. Frequently, a total cutaway from the relationship is needing for making progress in the devotion, Francis tells us. So how can we purify these attachments? We can realize the harm that is caused by sin. And this can lead us to contrition. And contrition cleanses the attachment. Francis explains that the purification referred to in the, in, in the previous chapter, of confession and absolution isn't enough. If you desire to embrace the devout life, you must not only give up the sin, but free your heart from all these attachments. So he's asking us to, to take these attachments and just, just get rid of them. They're, they're not necessary. They, they're, they hold us back. Be sure, my child, that if you want to seek a devout life, you must not nearly forsake them, but you must further cleanse your heart from all affections. To say nothing of the danger of relapse, these wretched affections will perpetually enfeeble your mind and clog it. You won't be able to be diligent and ready and frequent. So these, these things are very unimportant to us. So chapter 8, the means to purification. The first step towards the purification is a clear and vivid realization of the terrible effects that sin have on us, leading to sincere environment contrition. To obtain such perfect contrition, you must carefully make the following meditations. We need to place ourselves in the presence of God's reflection. The movements of the heart touch the will and force it to make proper decisions and to offer these decisions to God and plead for his grace to persevere. So how do we do all this? The highest means to purge ourselves of the affections of sins is for intent contrition. When we increase our contrition and repentance by a strong living conviction of the evil sin, bring, sin brings up upon us. To extend this contrition and repentance to everything relating to sin, to help root out of your heart both the sins and the affections, for it we need to practice the meditations and use them in order and giving them and taking away only one each day. There's a great book out there I read years ago it's by one of our former evangelists here. It's by Dr. Tom Curran. 
It's called Confessions, the five sentences that will heal your life. It's an easy, very easy read. Um, it's available on Amazon or, or Dr. Curran's um, website. It has a lot of practical resources for confession. It talks about the five sentences. I did it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I will make up for it. I will never do it again. And he really breaks these down into the different parts of confession. I did it. The confession. I am sorry. The contrition. Forgive me. The petition to God. I will make up for it. The satisfaction. And I will never do it again. The resolution. The sacrament of reconciliation or confession is a gift given to us by Jesus. This gift allows us to be reconciled with the Father, to be able to be right again. Cardinal Ratzinger wrote, If no contact with the living God of all men takes place in the sacrament, then they are empty rituals, which tells us nothing or gives us anything. In this devotion to the devout life, St. Francis de Sales through his writing, is trying to tell us to go deep, make a good confession, be reconciled. Make it the gift that Jesus has intended it for us. A few years ago, I was on retreat at St. Basil's in Methuen, and Father Martin Hyatt was leading this. And he was giving us direction before confession that evening. And I'm going to leave you with his advice as my last statement, he shared three things. Go into confession and tell your sins. Don't tell your wives. Don't tell your bosses or your children's. Tell us your sins. Don't sugarcoat them or beat around the bush. He also said, gentlemen, I've heard it all. You can't impress me. Tell me your sins. And finally, be a man of God. Make a good confession tonight. We all need to be men of God. If we want to lead the devout life, this is an important subject. Confession is an act of honesty and courage, an act in trusting ourselves beyond sin to the mercy of a loving and forgiving God. And that's from St. John Paul II. Thank you. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Anus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis.